Hello, makers. Welcome to Always Yarn First, a podcast about knitting, crochet, spinning, and all the other yarny goodness in between. I'm Lindsay, and I'm coming to you from Little Rock, Arkansas. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Always Yarn First. Before we get into the episode, I always like to do a little bit of admin. I have two make-alongs getting ready to wrap up at the end of this year. The first one is hashtag nothing but double. It is a make-along with my friend Lori from Arkansas Yarn Co. Um, We are making blankets and the only thing is it has to be a blanket and it has to hold yarn double. The other one is the hashtag stripe along 2023. And I am co-hosting that with Kimber's Crozy Creation, Amy from Happy Little Yarn, and Jessalyn Janice. And each one of them we're um, hosting on different platforms. Jessalyn is on Instagram using the hashtag. Amy is on her Facebook group. Kimber is on her Discord. And I am hosting in Ravelry. And all of those links are below. All right. So let's get into the episode, shall we? Uh, This is episode 51, and I think maybe the next episode might be my two-year anniversary, but I'll have to double-check that. I know it was in December when I started, uh, so it's coming up. Um, But if you are new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy it and choose to stick around. If you are new, I name every episode um, on a song title because before my love of yarn was my love of music. And this week I actually was struggling. There was no like song titles that were popping in my mind regarding to my making or attitude or anything like that. So I just chose Him for the Weekend uh, by Coldplay. And I do have a Spotify playlist that has every song from every episode I've named uh, songs after. And you can find the Spotify link for that playlist below. All right. So this week I have a finished object, a cast on, whips. I have some spinning to show, acquisitions. We're going to talk about what my plans are for advent slash vlogging. And then I do, I'm going to end with a quick uh, podcast highlight of someone I had just discovered. So as always, I will have timestamps below if you want to skip around. Um, So let's get into it. I am wearing a knitted item. Um, This is an older one. I am wearing the Ingles by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, I know the main yarn was Hey Sister Yarn Co., who is no longer in business. And I can't remember what the color is, but I have linked to my um, Ravelry below. And you can find all the information regarding this sweater. It's just a little bit of color work. And my yarn was variegated slightly, so... And I love it. I feel like this was my first ever color work I did. This is about as much color work as I like. Uh, I don't enjoy doing color work. And I am definitely not into like all over color work. That's too busy for me. Um, So I like something just like over the yoke a little bit. Um, This is perfect. So very easy, very enjoyable. All right, so let's get into finished objects. I have one finished object and I don't have it here, so I'm going to insert a picture. Um, My daughter uh, will be starting her first ever job. She will be working at um, a drive-through coffee spot and they usually take orders outside. So I was thinking of something warm for her And this is another one of those projects where it technically the yarn is um, a new acquisition. Of course, it was a new cast on and a finished object. I cast on um, the Brioche Cat Hat by Natasha Sills. Natasha is the owner and dyer behind Grady Knits, which you guys know I is one of my favorites. Um, The pattern is a free pattern and it's just for one size. So... I basically started from her pattern, but really just kind of then went from there um, because since it's free, I can talk about it. But I think her cast on was, 
I can't remember how many stitches it was, but I thought that is definitely not even going to get over my kid's head. Um, so I cast on 80 stitches and again, um, in my project page, I will have that information, but this is just a brioche stitch hat. And she basically has those written out. If you've never done brioche, this is my second ever brioche project. I did a test knit. Uh, Hohe Locatelli had a little shawl with brioche and that was my first ever brioche. So this is just the basic brioche stitch, which if the word brioche scares you, it's just um, working like a knit stitch with a yarn over or a purl stitch with a yarn over alternating. So it's, it's really not a big deal. Very easy. She has it written out. Again, it's a free pattern. And to make the little cat ears, all you do is once you cast on, you're working this basically ribbing, but it's brioche and you don't do any decreases. And then you turn the hat inside out and do you three needle bind off. And so when you put the hat on, it just naturally creates those little cat ears. Um, but I used N Natasha's yarn. It was a color I thought that my daughter would like. It is called Rainbow in the Dark. And it is her Merino Saurus worsted weight. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of black with like little rainbow, darker colored rainbow bits in it. So love it. My daughter loves it. So she will definitely be wearing that when she starts work in a week, I want to say. Yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll keep her warm and it was super cute and very quick, obviously to knit. So that is my only finished object. All right. Besides that cast on, I have one more cast on. I have it in my big old, um, Mrs. Brown's bag, but it's cause I have multiple yarns. So this is the, and of course it's all tangled up because reasons. Uh, this is the Totally Tessellated Socks by Andrea Mowry. Um, right now she is hosting a little challenge make along for this pattern um, to, you've got to start Wednesday evening and the challenge is to complete a pair of socks by like midday Monday, I think. I don't know exactly the time. So here's where I'm at. Um, they are a cuff down pattern. Her socks, she did a lot more on the leg. This is kind of just what I prefer. You can see how far. Her socks also put in a lifeline and then you do an afterthought heel. I just wanted to get it done. So I did my usual uh, shadow wrap heel, which I love. And so... There's no way I'm getting this pair of socks done by Monday. I, my goal, my personal goal is just to finish a sock by Monday, which, you know, I'm into the foot, so shouldn't be a big deal. These are not hard to do. They are mosaic knitting. The problem I'm having is the yarn management. So I'll show you what yarn I'm using. Um, and she kind of did similar um, yarns for hers. So I'm using... Uh, this is Treasure Goddess, my friend Christine, in her Yak Sock Base. And this is the colorway Far Horizon. This is just from my stash. And this is a Yak Base, and that is what Andrea had used was a Yak Base. And then I, this is where the tangle is in. Um, it called for, <sighs> what is the one everyone loves? I've just lost my mind on it. Um, now I gotta look it up because it's bothering me. Spin cycle. Don't know why I can't remember that. Spin cycle yarn. Um, but I knew that Arkansas Yarn Co. has the, the Zour Ball. And so I picked one of these up. Again, this is gonna be in acquisitions. So I picked one of these up to give it, you know, it has that spin cycle vibe there. And so this one, it doesn't have a color name. It has a color number. This is Zarball Crazy. So it is in fingering weight. And this is 2204. And then it calls for um, mohair. So again, this is just from my stash. And this is uh, from Webb's Valley Yarns, Southampton is the base. 
And again, it's just a color number, which is 016. So the thing is with mohair is, you know, it just wants to hug everything it touches at all. And you're, you're only ever using one strand of yarn. Uh, so like every row or every two rows, you have to switch yarns. So for me, I'm having to like recalculate because I want to make sure that they're not tangled up as I do it. So that is what's taking the most time. The knitting is easy. No problem. It's me just trying to recalculate my yarns so that it's not getting tangled. And I am really struggling. I don't know if someone has like a solution that works really good. If you do, please put it in the box. Um, and that's why I'm like, if I really try to get this pair of socks done by mid Monday, first of all, I wouldn't be able to knit or work on anything else for the weekend. And that just would make me um, cranky. So, but I'm loving them. They look great. I'm super happy with them. I'm going to finish them. It's just, it's slow going for me. I, I don't know. So yeah, I haven't been keeping them. And if you're, if, if one of your solutions is don't keep them in here, I have not Actually, when I work on it, I spread them out in whatever yarn I'm currently working with. I've moved to my right and I have the other two separate to my left. And then I like move whatever to my right when I'm working on that one and so on. I just have it in here when I'm not working on it because animals, cats. So yeah. So I'm going to definitely get one sock done. That's not a problem, but there's just no way for me to finish two socks, but I am enjoying the pattern. And, um, I have definitely like this patterning. Like I've seen her tessellated vest and stuff. But I'm wondering if this is just enough. If it's exactly the same. I'm guessing it is. With the patterning, I don't know if I could struggle through the whole thing. It would just make me crazy and not want to knit on it. So yeah, it is a six row repeat. I'm using my little uh, twice year sheep. I have five rows. When I do the six row, I just take it off. Um, but that way I know which yarn I'm using for that. So yes, that is my other new cast on. So I cast that on Wednesday and I am in the foot. So yeah. All right, now let's get into whips. Um, and once again, it seems to be the last couple of months, my theme is definitely more monogamous. Not monogamous as in one project, because I could never do that. But me working on like three projects in two weeks, that's pretty monogamous for me. Um, usually I am all over the place. Um, but yeah, it's been really good. So let's talk about my sock design. I've worked on that. I have it in a teeny tiny little... Arkansas Yarn Co. bag of warm, cozy drinks. Um, so I'm going to show the actual sock first. This is my design. It is not out yet. This is called Boots with the Fern. And this is currently in testing. So I have previously finished one sock. And the reason I'm showing you that because I'm still just on the foot. And this yarn is all tied up now. Um, so there's no, this is a toe up sock and the design doesn't happen till after the heel. So not really anything exciting to show you right now. I'm past the toe. I'm in the foot. So yeah, but I have a ways to go, but I'm kind of working along this in between, this is a great purse project right now before I have my patterning. Even the patterning is super memorizable. Very, very memorizable. Um, and that's kind of my aesthetic is I want it to be, I like to have some texture so I'm not bored, but I want it to be easy enough where I can, 
you know, especially because normally I like to work on many different projects. I want pattern to be easy enough when I pick it up. I'm like, I look at it for a second. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I remember what I'm doing here. It doesn't like I have to restudy the pattern to figure it out. So yes, this yarn is Legacy Fiber Arts Cozy Toes in their colorway Glock. And I just used on a little bit, I did a tiny bit of ribbing at the top and I used, of course, Arkansas Yarn Co. Plush Face, Yummy Plush in Wedding Cake, which is like my go-to white for anything. So yeah, not much to see on that, but um, I have testers working on this. I'm thinking they will be released in January. Um, I never got any testers for the 56 stitch count. So if you or someone you know is a sock knitter that knits in 56 stitches that would be interested, I just want one sock finished by the end of December to make sure that it was understandable, that it fits you right. Um, yeah. So if um, you know someone or you yourself are a sock knitter, even if you're slower, I, I mean, I just... Right now, uh, someone has already finished a sock and said it was, it had no problem. So that's great. I just kind of would like to make sure all sizes are as easily to understand. So, yes. So that will be coming soon. I don't know why I have it in this tiny little bag. I think because I, it's been my purse project. All right, so the next thing I've been working on is in one of my woolly bean bags. You've seen this many times. This is on my list to try to get done at the end of the month because I started this for the Hokey Fall um, Knit Along and it ends at the end of this month. So I am, I've been trying to devote some time to this. This is the Pure Joy Shawl. And okay, my stitch markers on this side. I'm in the last section. So you see my little stitch marker was before uh, this section. And again, it's short rows. So the bigger part is right here. So I've gotten quite a bit done. Actually, my short rows where I'm at, it's about right here. So these are how many short rows I have left from here to here. So not too bad. Um, I think I'll be able to work on this. Uh, today is Saturday. I didn't say that November 25th. And right now, besides all the animals who are miraculously quiet right now, uh, my daughter has plans today. She's out with my car. My husband is at an all day game day. So even tonight, I don't have to cook dinner. I'm going to have leftovers and I just get control of the TV. So I probably will be working on this because super easy while I'm watching TV and I basically get the house to myself today. So it's super exciting because all you other moms know if you're like me, you know, I just like, Oh yeah, you can watch whatever you want. I'll just watch what I want when on my computer or when you're not around. So it's a big deal when I get the house to myself. So hoping to get this done. Oh, the color I was using, the last color I was using um, is the Homestead Fibers. This beautiful minty green in the colorway Paul. And this variegated um, I got from Arkansas Yarn Co. It was Teeny Button, Teeny Button Studio in the color Island Getaway. Sorry, I'm not feeling the best today, so I'm my head is a little bit out of it. Let's see, I'll put that there. All right, I've only been working on one other thing, and again, you've seen this a lot. This is in my giant Tanny Casey bag, which I love for sweaters. It is my lace and fade boxy by Hokey Locatelli. So just a recap, um, I actually was a test knitter for this pattern, which was like over a year ago, I think. 
And then my grandma's health got really bad and I like could not focus on these lace sections and I contacted Hoagie and she was like, no problem. Um, and then it just got put away for a while and then I picked it back up and my stitch count was off, which, you know, when you're doing lace work cannot happen. So then I put it back down. We're past that. I am literally on, I just started the ribbing. So let me see. Find the stitch marker. I should have it on here somewhere. Oh, it's right here. So I haven't gotten very far. Looks like I was just starting this stockinette section right here. So the stripe for this last section is about the same uh, length of this, the other stripes of the stockinette. But the difference is part of it you do stockinette and then the rest of it you finish in the ribbing. So I did half of my rows in stockinette and now I'm in the ribbing section. Uh, so let me make sure my stitches aren't going to fall off and then hold it the correct way so you can see what we're looking at here. That's the back. That's the front. I love it. It's, it looks like it's a little bit, um, it's super sunny in here. So there you can see the coloring you can see the lace work. Um, yeah, I love it. And you can see because of the way this is, this actually goes down pretty much. Uh, you won't, there isn't much arm. You can see here, like the arm stitches start like right here. Ish. So it's not much, but I only have this much yarn left, my main color. So last weekend I was at Arkansas Yarn Co. I was um, getting some advice from Lori and I'm like, oh, if I run out of yarn, I mean, obviously I'm going to finish the body and then I do have to pick up a little bit and just uh, not much work here. You just kind of pick it up and cast it off, bind it off in a nice way. Um, and I have like just a little nubbin in here too, which honestly is probably enough for that. Um, <clears throat> but I was worried or I'd run out. And so I think I have a solution. Let me pause this and go get the other yarn real quick. All right. So um, I had previously bought this yarn from the shop and um, for the Stephen West MCAL, which I do like, but I don't think right now I'm going to worry about making. So I brought this sweater in with me and I asked her if she thought that this would work for the sleeves. Um, and she said that yes, it would because that pink looks really good, but she had suggested maybe striping it. So something like that, I'm probably going to do like work a little bit on one, work a little bit on the other. And you know my, me, I prefer shorter sleeves. As you can see, most sweaters that have long sleeves, I make them short because I am hot blooded and this way I can actually wear my sweaters. Um, so that's what I think my solution is going to be. Um, some kind of combination of that uh, just because I'm paranoid and this is junk yarn boss sock in her colorway astronaut Barbie and I don't know if it was like a limited time colorway but I haven't seen it at all it is not on Kemper's website and yeah I could ask her she could specially dye but I'm like it's not like I'm gonna need a ton so I would rather just try to find a solution that I already have in my stash so stay tuned, but um, this is the last item I have that is on my Make 9 Whip board, which is whips from before this year that I want to get done. So this is a goal to finish this calendar year. I want this done by December 31st. So that, this is another goal um, that I have been working on these. All right, so, oh, and the, the, um, the mohair I used for that is from Cake Wool 
cream base and the colorway smooch. So yeah. All right, and that's already all my works in progress. That's it. Um, but I have worked on some spinnings. So I will show you that quick. All right, so previously with my spinning, if you've been here a while, it's on my big old Lazy Kate ear. Um, I have been working on this alpaca. I had gotten this alpaca from Irish Meadows Alpaca Farm in Iowa, right by where I grew up. I've gotten many um, of their braids of that exact, from the, this exact alpaca. And so I was trying to finish it up. I'm on the last one. So I finished this up. I mean, the bobbin isn't full, but I figured I had enough to kind of make another bobbin about this size. So I have a little bit started currently on my bobbin uh, that I wanted to get worked up. And then when it came to kind of finishing some things, I was reorganizing because Advents are coming up. I have a fiber advent, plus I have lots of bats from Natasha that I want to work on. Um, so I was kind of seeing how many bobbins I had opened, which again was trying to make me consolidate, finish some things up. And I had noticed I had had um, one of Natasha's monthly club bats that I'm currently not getting. Um, but I had them... Um, I'd spun them, but I had not plied them. So yesterday I plied them. So yeah, this again is a mystery bat. It doesn't have a color name. It was a, a monthly color, has lots of the chocolatey browns, like a dark cranberry, some pops of like acidy yellow green. So these just have to be uh, skeined up on my Nitty Knotty, and then these two will be empty. And yeah, so I've been getting out the spinner again. And so that's why I also haven't done a, a ton of knitting because I've rearranged and I put my bats back out where I can see them. My beautiful bats, mostly from Natasha, because I her color aesthetic is my jam and I just love spinning them and they are so much fun to look at while you're doing them. So I'm looking at them and think, oh my goodness, I have so many things to spin. And even though I stopped her mystery bat club because I said I had way too much spinning to do, um, it's also given me the opportunity to buy some of the things, just her spinning fiber from her online store. So with that said, let's get into acquisitions. Okay, so let's start with, um, I have a couple things I've received and then some things I have purchased. So let's start with what I've purchased from Gritty Knits since I was just talking about Natasha. So like I said, because I haven't been getting her monthly, which I do love, um, I've been able to buy some of the fiber she has on her website, which she has beautiful fiber on her website. So the first thing I had been eyeing for quite a while is um, she, everyone's a little different, but she has on her website just pastel Tweety Bat. So I'll give you a whole look into this one. And the nice thing about these is on her website, it shows many different like color combinations, but they're all just really nice and light. And she said, if you don't see any on the website, but you want them to contact her, that she can make a lighter base. Because usually uh, a lot of the stuff I get from her are super bright and playful, but this one is, still has all those beautiful colors, but more toned down. And then if you follow me on Instagram, I posted this one yesterday. And oh. Um, I am a Instagram subscriber, I guess you call it. Uh, she has a subscription on her Instagram. It is $5 a month. You get, um, she'll do certain videos like die with me. She'll like let 
subscriber pick out colors and things. And you get a $10 coupon every month that is reusable. So again, you can't really use it on your um, monthly clubs because that's just automatically taken out. But when I ordered this, I used a $10 off coupon. When I ordered this beauty, I used a $10 off coupon. So that subscription pays for itself. Um, and she has a special subscriber only store. And if I'm not mistaken, this was on the subscriber only store. Look at these. Oh my goodness. I just, I mean, when I got, I knew they were beautiful. I've been eyeing them. I'm like, oh, I have to get some of these. So I use my coupon. And then, like, I posted it yesterday, and a family member's like, oh, did you get 16 ounces so you can make a sweater? And I'm like, oh, no. Now I want to go and buy two more of these. Oh, they're so good. I just, again, I love her bright colors, her dark colors, but this is just stunning. And even to make this go farther, if you had, you know, some of these other colors, the blue or the pink or the orange or whatever, you could easily ply it with this to make it go farther. Um, I mean, I could easily use these two together. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this, but I love this so much. So Definitely think about if you, you know, if I've got you on the gritty knits train, you should become a subscriber on Instagram because I'm telling you that coupon is totally worth it. Um, I love her. All right. So the last thing I received um, is my one uh, monthly club I am still a member of with Natasha, which is the all year advent club. So I've already wound up. Again, these are the dark moody colors. You can see this one's a little bit lighter, more of a gray face, but this one is definitely like the black with the purples. So I have those wound up and ready to go my projects. I just haven't started those yet. All right, so that's all from Natasha from Gritty Knits. So then um, I went to Arkansas Yarn Co. last week, like I mentioned, and I got a couple of things. Um, first of all, I knew I was getting um, a unique sock set. Uh, I They just started carrying the brand Unique. This is a sock kit. It only is a skein of yarn, but it's already wound up and it's in two 50 gram cakes. So it is ready to go. So um, I was eyeing which one I wanted. And y'all know Lori, she does not like brown. But I love blue and blue is my favorite color. And of course I love pink too. They have some striping sock sets that's just all colors of blue. And then they have like a pink one. And those are cool, but for some reason, this is the one I couldn't stop thinking about. I love it. I wouldn't say brown is like a favorite color of mine, but I, well, besides that I'm a gray headed person now, but I have brown hair. I have brown eyes. Um, like Topaz is my uh, birthstone. So those browns, golden browns look good on me. And I just love this one. And there is quite a bit of blue in the top and bottom striping with the brown, which I think looks really cool. So yeah, I got a sock kit. And then I bought the Zara Ball Crazy, which I've already shown in my Ender and Maori socks. And then I got something special. Now, this is not available yet from the store. It should be available Monday. So if you're watching this when it comes out on Sunday, check back this coming week at Arkansas Yarn Co. So you have heard me talk about 
lemon wood. I have two of them um, where you basically put your ball of yarn on and it keeps it nice and tidy. Well, Lori had one specifically made for the store and it had come in the day before I was there. And so here's the bottom. So it is like the Arkansas Yarn Co. Um, logo. And if you can see, she even had her put those like sparkles in there. So here is the middle part of it. And then even more special is she has, she is the only person right now who has a colored strap for it. So it matches that, that dark flower real nice. So this will be in the shop. She has plenty of them but I was able to pick one up early. So super excited, very, very cool. Um, if you're doing any like solo fingering projects, hat, socks, this is a great thing to have and that it comes apart so easily. It has a nice little bag that you can keep it in when you're not using it so you don't lose it. Love these so much. Okay, now I was gifted a few things, and I'll, I guess I'll tell you what Lori gifted me first. So Lori gifted all the um, Arkansas Yarn Co. team members a Freckled Whimsy Advent Skein. So this is 24 stripes. She did split skeins, so it is twisted together. It is not wound up already, and then it comes with a 20 gram mini. So I'm about to show it. If you do not want to be spoiled, this is Freckled Whimsy Advent Skein. So look away now. Here it is. I won't talk about what colors they're in in case you're not looking. So there's the mini, and this is two skeins. Uh, just twisted together. So I will just have to um, bind these two. Okay, putting it away. You can look back. You can wear these foils. So that was super cute. All right, the last thing I got, uh, I had talked about that I'm co-hosting uh, the Stripe Along, and um, it's been really, really fun. I've gotten to know Kimber and Amy and Jessalyn better, and um, everyone's been super generous, like gifting each other. You know, Kimber gave us self-striping yarn that she had made for that. And then I got a package from Jessalyn and she was just playing around with, um, uh, dyeing her own yarn and she wanted to give us each one. So this is what I got this week. Isn't it lovely? Like these are colors I would have not have thought to go together, but they look so good. And I'm in love with these stitch markers she gave me. Um, this little shiny beaded one, which looks so pretty next to her yarn. And then this one, adorable. So uh, she didn't tag it, but she just said it was a 75-25 uh, sock yarn. So I love it so much. Um, I'm planning on gifting each of them some of my um, hand spun. I need to sit and go through it. In fact, today, being that I have a quiet house, I might get all my hand spun out on this table and go through. I really want to start um, putting together yarn to use my hand spun for a night shift um, shawl. So I need to figure out which colors go together and then I can gift some of it out. So, yes, yeah, so that is my acquisitions. Yeah. All right, so let's go into talking about December vlogging plans. All right, so if you've been here uh, the last few weeks, I have shared on what my advent purchases, uh, what I have, 
um, for December. So you just saw I received this. Sorry about that. And then I had purchased the Woolens and Nosh. And these ones uh, do have the, um, I do need to wind up, and this is just the extra skein. So I need to wind those up and I can start um, either cuffs or toes, depending on how I want to do it. And then she has the yarn caked up and separated. So it starts with this gray, the same as this, and then it goes into the colors. Um, and then I had just my potato sack, um, Lord of the Rings Fiber Advent uh, from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. So, and then I'm also planning on doing the Snow Matter What Gnome Make Along. Um, so that's what I have going that I can work on in December. So here's my plans. Last year, what I did um, is I would shoot just a little bit of footage every day, mainly focusing on working on my advents. Last year I had one yarn advent, which was from Arkansas Yarn Co. What else did I have? I feel like there was something else. Now I don't remember, but I focused on basically trying to stay up to date working on Advent. I made two projects from one Advent. Um, so yeah, that was my goal. And I'm thinking I'm going to do things exactly the same. So what I plan on making is I am not planning on making this skein of yarn for socks, at least in December. So that's going to be put away. Um, since this is already caked up nice, ready to go, I am planning on working on Woolens and Nosh. I have never done an Advent sock. I know that the idea is a stripe a day for each sock, but with sizing and foot length, I don't get how that works exactly. So I think what I'm going to do is either cast on the toe or the cuff and then do the stripe a day color and just make a tube. So I may not get the socks totally done by the end of December, um, but I should have two full tubes that I need, will need to cut in the afterthought. Um, that is my goal for that. I am also definitely planning on working on spinning this every day. Um, I plan on keeping my spinner out and just spinning a little bit of fiber every day. I'm super excited for this. Um, and then I also plan to try to keep up with the gnome make along. Um, I, again, am not really a toy maker. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I know it's not that much knitting. It's just the fact that it's so tiny, like kind of freaks me out. Um, but I really, I thought, and I know that every day there isn't knitting for it. it like we be a story or something like that. Um, so but my goal is to try to work on these three things in December, besides whatever other things I'm working on. So yes, yeah, so what I plan on doing is every day in December, I will post a little something on my Instagram story or reel. I think last year I did reel where I'll put what day it is. And then for those that aren't in on Instagram, because some had said they wanted to watch, but they weren't on Instagram. So at the end of the week, like after seven days, I will lump those seven days together and then I will post it on YouTube if you prefer to watch it that way. Um, a few notes to that is one, um, I don't celebrate holidays and I'm a homebody. So I won't have a lot of extra footage of me going out and doing things. I'll try to put in things here and there, but I'm kind of boring, you guys, but that's why I just sit home and knit. Um, so I, that's why I focus on opening and working on the crafts for the month. So if that is your jam and just like seeing what little presents I open up every month and um, seeing if I can get through what that day's tasks are, then excellent. I hope you uh, stay tuned. Um, also, just for my own frame of mind, I, last year I started two days early. So what does that mean? So what that means is I'm not going to post till December 1st, but I will actually record my first day, um, Monday, November 30th. I will be doing 
the first stripe of this and my fiber. Now that won't work for the gnome because I won't get information till December 1st. So that will be backed up a little bit. But I find that that worked better with my state of mind where I had, I didn't feel like I was in a hurry to edit that day. And if something came up or I felt really sick or whatever, then I still had a day cushion between there. So I won't start posting till December 1st, but I'm going to start my making um, Monday. Man, this coming Monday, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, so I hope that if that is your jam that you are able to watch. I appreciate you all. Um, yeah. All right, so one last thing before we go. Um, I have one podcast to highlight. Um, I found a new to me podcast. I actually forgot to look how long she has had a podcast, but it is the Pine Cottage and it is Nicole. She lives in Ohio. And from what I can see, I've watched about three of them. It seems like she does a monthly podcast and they're still about like 35 to 45 minutes, kind of what I usually try to aim at. Um, so not overly long, but I just enjoy her personality and her style and so definitely check out her. I will put a link to her YouTube channel below. All right, y'all, that's all I have for this week. I hope that um, you've all been able to enjoy your making and you have had time for yourself and not been getting sick, unlike my household here uh, with the weather changes. But I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe um, if you enjoyed this. I appreciate you. And I will see you in two weeks. Bye.